sequential circuits yes so today we will start with sequential circuits this is uh, as you will notice later uh, when you will appear for interviews or anything this is one of the most uh, um, how do i put it one of the most uh, widely asked topics in your interviews hmm? so uh, please pay sufficient attention to this topic ask as many questions as you wish to uh, not exactly on the basics of the circuits but finally you know probably today or in the next session and we will work on the timing diagrams hmm? on the timing constraints linked to sequential circuits then uh, there will be you know uh, those kind of questions are usually asked in the interviews in the interviews and in the written tests and all that so that you should really be very clear of hmm? so sequential circuits is a very important topic we use sequential circuits in our designs uh, very very regularly so uh, what are sequential circuits and how are they different from combinational circuits anyone sir output of a sequential circuit should depend upon the previous input and uh, present input as well uh, on the other hand the combinational only depends on the present input okay any other ideas suggestions hmm so gagandeep said that output of a sequential circuit depends on previous input and present input both or previous output and present input both whereas output of a combinational circuit is dependent only on present input hmm so that is the key difference between sequential circuits and combinational circuits and uh, this you know what this also means is that we need to because there is a sense of previous state and current state and so let us say a future state what will be the output and how will the next uh, state de be dependent on it and so on because it requires that kind of a thing we need something which is called as state or tokens this is uh, these these this previous set of inputs and current set of inputs and the future outputs all this is clubbed and called as a state or also a token in some texts you will see the word token also used somewhere and uh, where do we see them finite state machines all of us know we have seen mealy machine more machine and all that hmm? you remember finite state machines and pipelines also you must have heard hello yes yes so pipelines finite state machines these are some common places where you will you will have to use sequential circuits hmm uh sequential circuits or the sequencing when i say that uh, there is uh, some input uh, dependence on uh, you know that the there is a comp so this combinational logic over here uh, and there is this flop over here so whatever happened in the previous cycle will de define what will happen in the next cycle over here hmm? so all that all the dependence is uh, comes with an overhead or with comes with a uh, with a penalty hmm? so what happens is that if let us say in this particular pipeline if if uh, or how do i put it let us say that if there are combinational paths and we know that the slowest path or let me show the slowest path in a different way let me say this is the slowest path and the fastest path would never intersect hmm then we are safe however if the slowest path and the fastest path for example are going to converge into some cone or something like that then it may happen that we may have glitches on the output of this nand gate are you able to see this what i am saying let us say there are two inputs one input comes very fast the other input comes very slowly then what can happen is that in an intermediate state when this input has reached but the other one has not reached i could get glitches and these glitches or we may not really call it glitches we may get spurious transitions 
are you able to see this so uh, so when we are considering the combinational logic only then i don't exactly control na ki how the inputs are going to be arriving or when they could arrive like in an adder like in an adder there is some path which is longer so it will take longer time to come yes sir and so sir like okay hmm. there are some paths which are longer some paths which are shorter so shorter paths will come to the nand gate longer paths will come later so there will be some fourier states that will appear these fourier states not only mean more power consumption but also extra toggling and and possibly corruption of uh, state machine elsewhere hmm so if we cannot ensure that the flow of information will be uh will be always uh, synchronized we use what is called as tokens or we use what is called as flip flops so when when for example in an in a fiber optic cable you know that you send this pulse okay this pulse and any other pulse will all travel at same speed which is the speed of light am i right they are all light pulses just the amplitude of the pulse is higher or lower hmm the speed of the pulse will exactly be the same so you do not need to put any sequencing elements in in a optical fiber you say it's fine my light will always travel with the speed c hmm it is only the dispersion between the pulses that defines how what is the minimum time between two pulses however in terms of uh hardware in terms of our circuits we cannot always ensure that the slow paths will be able to catch up with the fast paths and so on hmm and therefore we need to break the hardware path and use what we call as flip flops or latches to delay these fast signals this fast path we say okay before entering this and gate i will have a series of flip flop 